Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel. My name is Mike. I'm continuing my Week 2 recaps. This video is for the week that was Week 2 in the AFC East. And I think where we have to start with this AFC East recap is with the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins have started 2-0 now after winning on the road uh, in a big win at Indianapolis. They start 2-0. Not only that, but 2-0 on the road. And uh, they'll head home to play Atlanta in Week 3. But I think you saw in Week 2 um, against the Colts, some of the free agent acquisitions really come to the forefront for the Dolphins. You know, you worry sometimes about these young teams. You know, are they going to be able uh, to really, uh, you know, when they get all these new high-priced acquisitions, how will they mesh? How will they come together? And I think it's proof by these two road wins uh, that this team has really come together, uh, really played sound football. That's really how you win on the road uh, in the NFL, particularly against a playoff team like the Colts. I mean, you saw the likes of Mike Wallace, uh, get involved a little bit in the passing game early with some dink and dunk passes and then hit them long. Uh, the Colts defense in the second half and really come to the forefront in the passing game. Defensively, though, is where I thought you saw the biggest difference makers uh, from acquired in the offseason for the Dolphins. First and foremost is Brent Grimes. And, and Brent Grimes is a guy who the Dolphins got uh, from Atlanta uh, in the offseason. You know, he was a little bit under the radar. Not many people really believing in the 30-year-old that he could reform, return to the form that he was before he got hurt last year. I thought he did a great job on Reggie Wayne and really sort of solidified that defense yesterday. And when you throw in the, the play of Phillip Wheeler and also Danell Ellerby, the free agent uh, linebackers that the Dolphins picked up, you start to see this defense rounding into shape. And, uh, you know, Tannehill, I think, although he's played well the first two games, will definitely go through some bumps in the road here in his second season as he still matures as a quarterback. But we know they already had the solid defensive line. And if that's secondary, most notably Grimes and Wheeler and Ellerby can sort of solidify that linebacker spot, you know, I think you're going to see this team improve even more um, as the weeks go on here. Again, I, I think they can get a little bit more um, out, of the, out of the running game. I think they had an okay game running the ball. I think they protected Tannehill well. Um, but remember, you know the Colts defense, defense is really uh, not a top unit in the league, to say the least, and to be nice about it. So I'm interested to see against the better teams how that offensive line holds up from both a pass protection perspective and a run block perspective. Time will tell on that. But they have a very big challenge in week three, in my mind, in their home opener um, against the Falcons. And, you know, the Dolphins have, have opened up a, a home favorite against the Falcons. And, uh, you know, if I would have told you that three weeks ago, you might have thought that to be a little bit far fetched. But that's how far in the eyes of the odds makers uh, that the Dolphins have come. But I think the Falcons are a serious step up in competition from even the Colts. Uh, the Falcons coming in at 1-1 one and one after a big win uh, at the, against the Rams at home. So we'll see how Week 3 pans out um, for the Dolphins, but so far so good. Moving on in the AFC East, the other big story this week was, of course, uh, the win the Buffalo Bills had with that fourth quarter drive late, uh, you know, courtesy of an E.J. Manuel touchdown pass to Stevie Johnson. This is a game that was very much a grinded out game until late. When you know EJ Manuel led the Bills on an 80-plus yard drive, um, aided by a huge pass interference call on uh, you know, all, pretty much all pro linebacker Luke Keekley, a very uncharacteristic mistake by him, gives Buffalo the chance, gives EJ Manuel the chance to hit Stevie Johnson and win the game. Um, I thought you really had to see like what you saw uh, from Mario Williams in this game. I thought he's really seems like. Uh, you know, he's playing a lot better this year, certainly, than he did last year. I still worry about that secondary, even though the Panthers weren't really able to really, you know, really pick them apart or really be any threat to them. And certainly next week when they play the Jets, the Jets probably won't uh, be a formidable opponent in that way. But, you know, putting a defense to the side, you know, I think in Buffalo, you finally have something to be happy about or look forward to with a young quarterback in EJ Manuel. Uh, you know, he's is he going to go through some growing pains his rookie year? Yes, but you know, his poise, his calmness, I think rubs off on the rest of the offense. I think that's the only reason why you see him able to orchestrate that late game drive, the team's belief in him, his belief in his team. And again, you know, it's been a very long time in Western New York when you had a quarterback that you could seriously rally behind. I know Fitzpatrick had his moments, but you know I don't think anyone seriously thought he was going to be the quarterback for the you know, six, seven-year future in Buffalo. But I think you have one in manual, and what a great win uh, at home. 
against Carolina yesterday. Remember now, Emmanuel will make his first start on the road next week uh, at MetLife against the Jets. Yes, I know the Jets aren't a great opponent, but still, first road game. Interested to see how he plays in that one. I think this is where Spiller and Fred Jackson really have to come to the forefront and help out the young rookie on the road. You know, the last game in the AFC East this week was the Thursday game. And, you know, you play these Thursday games every week now. By the time Monday comes along, it seems like that game was a month ago. Uh, that game was a definitely a forgettable game <laughs> for a lot of reasons. The Patriots beating the Jets 13-10. to And I thought you saw... Uh, some good and bad things from both teams. I think that Patriots defense, again, showed that they're opportunistic. Uh, this has been a trend here for the last two or three years for the Patriots. Near the top in turnovers produced. Uh, obviously, Geno Smith helped them a lot by basically throwing the ball right at some New England defenders. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball for the Patriots, I think we saw a lot of their warts sort of come to fruition. And granted, Tom Brady's playing with a skeleton crew to be nice about it. Uh, whether it was Aaron Dobson, Kembrell Tompkins was in the wrong spot at times. You basically saw Tom Brady uh, limited to throwing to one guy, really. And that was Julian Edelman, uh, who had you know uh, several, I think over 10 catches, but only about 85 yards or so. So we'll see if Gronkowski comes back this week. He's still a 50-50 proposition. Amendola is going to be out. It looks like a pretty prolonged period of time. So how does the addition of Gronkowski help Brady? Uh, you would think it help him some. Um, but how much as uh, the Patriots sort of feel their way through a very easy first part of the schedule, which I think is helping them here. They have Tampa Bay uh, coming in next week uh, to Gillette Stadium. Now, obviously, now to the Jets to wrap up this recap here of Week 2. You know, the Jets, I think, on defense, uh, probably a little bit better than people thought. I think you have to like their defensive line. Muhammad Wilkerson, Sheldon Richardson both played very well. Uh, they got the two guys in the middle. They have Harrison and they have Kenrick Ellis. I think that's a solid defensive line. I think when you have Demario Davis and David Harris, you have good inside linebackers too. That secondary is still a little bit iffy for me, especially the spot opposite Cromarty, the cornerback spot. You saw Darren Wallace have some good moments in the game against the Patriots. You saw D. Milliner have one good uh, forced fumble kind of moment, and but then uh, again, like uh, in other moments, didn't look that great as he sort of has to get acclimated to the NFL game rather quickly because he missed some time uh, in the preseason with the shoulder injury. The Jets will host the Bills next week. You look for the progression of Geno Smith now. He's had some good moments in these games. I thought he tried to force some balls uh, late in the game versus the Patriots, and it sort of you know really bit him. You see when these young when these young quarterbacks try to make these laser throws in the middle of the field. Uh, they end up getting confused by the defense and often doesn't lead to good things there. But, again, I like the Jets' running game in the game against the Patriots. It was markedly improved from the game, uh, the opener against the Buccaneers. We'll see if they can improve on that. And also, uh, you know, see if Geno uh, can develop even more here um, under center for the Jets. So we got the battle of rookie quarterbacks here in Week 3 coming up in the division with the Jets and the Bills. We have the Patriots home to the Buccaneers. And we have Miami in a huge game hosting the Falcons. I'll be previewing all those games, guys, like I preview every week. I'll be recapping uh, the NFL division by division here. So be sure to check that out as well. Thanks again for listening, and have a great night.